Now get out of here, or you'll miss the next Class episode. Class is uneventful, and after the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Muto again. So, bro, you like bro assemble the Broman for the Bro Science Club? Or... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? It seems like club business, so we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Muto smiles in his usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are just not shaped correctly to let him smile naturally. Oh, bro, you're like, bro logical. I, I, I guess so? Yeah, you're you're a bro scientist that has bro power. You're a bro leader. Yes, you bro can. Bra. <laughs> <laughs> I do honestly do not know what he's trying to say in any of this. Yeah, it's funny because because we went from like drunk teacher who can form sentences. <laughs> Just... To like a guy that just is kind of cool to a guy that speaks a completely different language. <laughs> and the fact, apparently, this is just how scientists speak to one another, and that's why it's just so foreign, and that's why he picked Kiso because he can understand. Because he speaks bro. So <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> but, you know, we have to be bro certain. Because the bro authorities just want us to be bro right. He chuckles and goes along with this awkward smile of this awkward joke. And I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think I'm being too successful. Bro, I'm just I'm just bro kidding. Uh, but nobody's like a bro know it all, right? So you can't be a bro expert. You just have to bro fake it sometimes not to be confused with faking because that's unbro like there's <laughs> some things we can be certain of though right bro oh uh, like there's gravity bro to illustrate Mateo picks up a pencil and drops it see bro see this is called bro gravity <laughs> uh, we need to make sure how it bro works, and sometimes, you know, we just, we just have to bro. So, like, bro check, bro check, bro check, and that's bro science, bro. The whole time I'm listening rather feeling, or uh, feeling rather spellbound. Mateo seems to really be passionate about this stuff. He's, he's broing hard. I think it's hard to tell sometimes, though how the world works, how humans work, how the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I go into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's a real priority for me. I'm pretty sure that's not science. I'm pretty sure that's biology. Does, does he know that? Uh... <laughs> well, biology is a science. I guess it's part of sciences, but I feel like he's a physics teacher, though. Muto's a physics teacher. Is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. And... But this a is a science club, so it's probably all science, but specializing in physics because Muto is in it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, besides, as we start discussing the book he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than my heart condition. That's good. Before we even realize it, an hour has gone by. Oh, uh, well, you know, we can uh, bro chill for today, okay? Uh, we'll have another bro sesh tomorrow, or maybe the bro day after. <laughs> he considers this for a moment. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's just bro chill right now. Uh, I got some uh, bro grading to do. Uh, uh, okay, see you then. As I exit the classroom, I realize I don't really have anything to do tonight. Emmy and I didn't make plans, so... 
I guess I'll go to the library. It beats doing homework in my room anyway. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excessive heat and humidity. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are so well worn that the pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to still be usable, but if you handle them with care, I make my way to the main desk, where I spot Yuko busying herself with something or another. She smiles at me as I enter and waves. Hello, Hisa. Oh my god, you're so cute. <laughs> Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular, I guess. I just didn't really feel like going back to my room is all. Yuko nods. Well, if you're unoccupied, maybe you could help me look for something. Uh, sure. Well, what do you need? Yuko brings a finger to her lips and looks around f uh, fruitively. She seems to be looking for eavesdroppers. C c come closer. I take a few hesitant steps forward while feeling distinctly unnerved. Yuko lowers her voice to a confidential whisper. I am on the trail of the Yamaku cat burglar. The what? Shh! The walls have ears, he saw. <laughs> or they might. But listen, those missing books, remember them? Uh, yeah? Well, they're, they weren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. I remember you saying something of the sort earlier, but how do you know? Yuko leans in closer and, if possible, whispers even lower. Because I found one of his hiding places. You did what? Yuko looks triumphant. Found one of his stashes. It was right under the stairwell in the boys' dorm. Three books I'd be looking for all there. What the fuck, Kenji? I'd suspected a thief before, but th this proves it. So, did you take back the books? Yuko looks as if I just suggested she walk around naked. <laughs> Are you nuts? <laughs> he can't know I'm onto him. He might go around and evade capture. Uh, so what do you need my help with then? Yuko casts another glance around the library and leans in closer. Yo, how close is she leaning? <laughs> <laughs> She's like this mushed up against his face, like, you He's there, like, uh, for me! <laughs> too close, too close! <laughs> you've, you've got to spy for me. A spy? Yeah, like when you're in the dorms, you know? Keep an eye out for suspicious activity. Oh, what constitutes suspicious anyway? I mean, Kenji is a pretty suspicious dude, but I'll wait. See, this is where. Well, Kenji's a pretty suspic. Oh, Kenji. That should. That's yeah. how that. That should. How that train of thought should have. Like, gone. if he lets her think that, like, he has no clue that he, like, where the books are, he knows where the books are. Like, he made a point of looking at the one book she was looking for. Why? Like, why right didn't he say top. before? Like, oh, by the way, Yuko, I saw this book. Like it had the today. same title that <laughs> yeah. the one that you said you were looking for. <sighs> but I'll wager he barely goes to class, much less sneaks into the library to pilfer books. Still, what's the harm in saying yes? At least it'll get me out of this really weird conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do that. No, no problem. Yuko straightens up and claps excitedly. Great! Now, hurry and take about, uh, talk about something else in case someone comes in. How's the school treating you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, pretty well, actually. I've been running in the mornings with... Hemi Barazaki, right? Uh, yeah. How do you know? I served the two, uh, you two in the tea house, remember? I deduce that if you were going to run with anyone, it would probably be her. She looks pleased with herself. Im impressive. Anyway, yes, we've been running in the mornings, and uh, we kind of started dating. 
Yuko claps her hands together excitedly. Really? That's great! I bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? I even thought of myself when you walked into Shanghai that one time. I wonder if that kid will wind up with one of those girls. Uh, really? Yuko doesn't seem to notice me somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yep, I could tell that you'd wind up with one of them, you know? I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course. Her expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. We got along really great, but it turned out he was younger than me. And that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird was that he disappeared one day, and I've not seen him since then. Huh, that does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't. I intend to try, uh, intend to try and calm her down further, but the both of us jump in surprise at the ringing suddenly coming from my pocket. That was a loud phone. This is a like the worst ring cell phone tone ring ever. I, this is like a house phone. That was <laughs> like, a house. Phone. Oh, sorry, I just gotta pull this landline out of my pocket. Like, <laughs> he has that one that has the the circular dial. Yeah, <laughs> he's just got like a cord following him out the door and like around the corner <laughs> all the way to his room. <laughs> Well, I didn't. I didn't want to be left out and not have a phone on me. Uh, my parents are kind of cheap because my meds are so expensive. I've never uh, seen a two hundred foot cord before. It's like out the doorway. Yeah, Every, like people are tripping over it. <laughs> yeah, oh, shit. You go size to steady yourself, and I pull the phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for directly causing the incident. Emmy. What's up? Oh, thank God I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this number would work or whether you would pick up, and I can't... Whoa there, Emmy. Slow, slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line, during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something has got her terribly agitated, and it's starting to agitate me. Can, can you just... Can you stop by? Like now, or shortly after now? I, I really, really need to talk to you. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence that I don't think I've ever heard from her. Uh, of course, I'll be right there. Hold steady, okay? In my increasingly agitated state, I apparently start saying things that don't, that don't quite make sense. Uh, okay, I'll be okay. See you soon. Right over. I press the button to end the call before slipping the phone back into my pocket, apologizing to Yuko for running off, and then run off. Perhaps some point I would have stopped to think about the time or how suspicious it looks for a guy to enter the girl's dorm at this hour, except right now I'm just concerned with getting to Emmy and finding out what's wrong and how I can help her. I knock on the door and I'm greeted with a subdued... Come in. Something is very wrong as I stare at the scene before me. Emmy's there, yes, but she's in a wheelchair, and her legs are missing. I glance around the room and see them sitting in a corner, looking like they've been thrown there. Emery responds to my entrance with a lopsided, uh, lopsided grin that is both pleased to see me and completely, utterly heartbroken. Hi, so. It looks like she's been crying, but if she was, she's stopped now. I notice that I'm a little out of breath, take, having taken the, the stairs two at a time in order to get here. My heart doesn't seem to mind the strain though. I file this happy fact away for a later consideration. Like when I'm not staring somewhat dumbstruck at my girlfriend in a wheelchair. Realizing I've still not responded to her greeting, my brain lurches into gear. Emmy, what happened? Guess I should've listened to you, Hiso. My leg's got a nasty infection. I'm not allowed to run on it for at least a couple of weeks. She gives a bitter laugh that shouldn't be coming from her. <laughs> I can't even walk on it. I should have used a crutch and kept one of my legs, but I didn't see the point. Why well, hop? You can't run on one leg. 
At least this way I can still, I don't know, roll fast or something? It, it, yeah, that's good, right? My awkward attempt to look on the bright side seems appreciated, but not really effective. Emmy shrugs again. It's just kind of a nuisance. I mean, we can't even eat up on the roof now. No wheelchair access. Yeah, but that's not a big deal, right? I mean, we can still eat together, and that's the important thing. That lopsided grin again. It hurts to look at it. I suppose so, yeah. But like I said, it's a nuisance. I mean, I haven't really used a wheelchair in... She thinks for a minute. Maybe seven years? Something like that, anyway. A long time. I'm afraid I'm a bit out of practice. Well, fortunately, it's only temporary, right? Emmy nods. Oh yeah, of course. It's not like I've lost him permanently. But it's a pain in the ass all the same. I nod sympathetically. There's not much else I can do after all. Well, what am I gonna do? Say, I told you so? <laughs> Although, I did tell her to get that leg looked at. But at the time, I noticed it was too late anyway. Do you need help with anything? Uh, that is, can I help you with anything? Emmy shakes her head and there's a bit of her usual grin back. Nah, I can manage fine by myself. Although, if you want to help me over to my bed, it would save me the trouble of rolling over there myself. I blush in spite of myself. Emmy giggles. <laughs> You're such a prude, he out. I'm not a prude. I just wouldn't want to take advantage of a young woman such as yourself. It's ungentle, ungentlemanly. I wheel Emmy's chair to her bed and easily scoop her up and deposit her there. She quickly sorts herself out and sits on the side. She's actually a little heavier than she looks. It would be rude for me to observe this aloud, of course. <laughs> God. <laughs> He's he's turning into tuxedo mask. He's like, wow, wow, Serena, are you gaining weight? She's like, you idiot. This is, I I physically just face palmed. Oh god. So hard right now. Ugh. All right, let's see how she takes it. <laughs> Man, you're kind of heavy. Yep. Oh good. That, yeah. <laughs> Emmy hits me with a pillow. Ass. Just saying, is all. Must be all that running. <laughs> is her accent rubbing off? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Crap. Must be all that running. <laughs> At the mention of running, grin, Emmy's grin falters slightly. <laughs> well, I guess I won't have to worry about that for a bit, huh? Maybe I'll lose some weight. That's what you do to lose weight, right? Cease physical activity? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what the nurse would recommend. Speaking of which, are you going to still be showing up in the mornings? I'd hate to run all- Ah, shit. Emmy's sudden interjection, more a disquieted muttering than anything too profane, causes me to look over in shock. Why? Why would that seem like a good idea? Oh, I know how much you love running. Do you want me? You know, do you want to watch me in the mornings while <laughs> I can do something that you can't? Yeah. Oh, she's leaning forward, trying to cover the fact that she's crying by covering her eyes with a hand. Of course, the subdued sobbing makes it pretty obvious she's crying. Uh, I'm sorry. Forget I said anything, okay? I place a hand generally around her. Ooh, I place a hand gingerly around her and pull her close. I can think of nothing else to say or do. How do you comfort someone who's just lost their legs again? Emmy wraps me in a hug and stays that way for a while. Sorry. I'm pretty bad at this whole comforting thing, I guess. Don't say that. I'm fine, really. Her voice is slightly muffled by my chest. I pat her head reassuringly. That's the spirit, right? You'll get through this fine. I know it. Besides, I'm here to help you, remember? Emmy lifts her head and stares at me with tear-stained eyes. Can you? Can you really? 
She grins lopsidedly, and something sparkles in her gaze. I can't tell if I'm being mocked or not. Of, of course, I mean, sure, you're a bit heavy, but... <laughs> My witty comment is cut off by the sudden press of Emmy's lips on mine. I'm caught off guard, and I'm rewarded by hitting my head on the wall behind her bed. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ow. Emmy pulls back, trying to look concerned rather than like she's about to laugh. Are you okay? Sorry. I rub my head ruefully and grin back at her. Caught me off guard there. Is that going to become a habit? Am I going to be lectured by Shizune and Misha more? At the mention of the duo, duo Emmy giggles. Honestly, those two. If I didn't know why, I'd be utterly confused as to why she hangs around with someone so bossy. Oh, which one are we talking about? You know exactly which one he's out. Misha's hardly bossy. So, what's the reason then? Huh? The reason why Misha hangs around Shizune. Emmy waves the que my question off with a smile. No idea. Mm, I see. Anyway, you seem to be forgetting the original question, don't you? Oh yeah, I guess I am. You wouldn't mind giving a guy a little warning, would you? Otherwise, I'm liable to wind up with a concussion. I emphasize the point by rubbing the back of my head. Emmy giggles madly. You could wear a helmet. Some kids here do, you know? Or I could just take revenge. I grab a pillow from <laughs> beside me and whack Emmy over the head. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm trying not to look at this as abuse and just a playful fighting. The worst. Like she has no legs. She can't balance herself. <gasps> He's so you're such a stupid guy. Oh god. Ah, oh, Emmy topples off the bed and lands on the floor with a thump. Her arms promptly reappear on the bed as she managed to pull herself back up. She really has a surprising amount of strength in that little body. Her face is turned downward away from mine, making me think I might have accidentally hurt her. Uh, Emmy, are, are you... you okay? You didn't hit your... A <laughs> hand shoots up and grabs my collar. She pulls me in with a sharp tug, her face now barely an inch away from mine, and she grins cheekily. Uh, Emmy? She gives me a sharp headbutt, <laughs> our foreheads making quite a loud thud. <laughs> Just some WWE going on. <laughs> oh my, if she like KO'd the guy, that, that would be it. I'd be in all the way. <laughs> this game is hilarious. Oh, I sit back and rub my now sore head as Emmy smirks victoriously. How's ha that for revenge? No, no fair! You can't <laughs> take revenge for revenge. If someone's missing most of her legs, Emmy surprised. Uh, for someone missing most of her legs, Emmy's surprisingly agile. I swipe at her, but she definitely rolls out of the way and lands uh, a hit with her pillow. Of course, the odds are against her. I can stand up for starters. <laughs> oh. Uh. Egg. Guess I can't after all. Emmy seems to have effectively tripped me up and is now sitting promptly, uh, primarily astride. Primly. <laughs> oh, pri prim. Like prim and proper. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know what it means. I just read it as primly. Again, adding more. You said primarily, though. <laughs> Did I? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> primly. Oh, God. Primly. Sitting primly astride me as I lay on my back. I'm not even sure how she managed it. I win. Her eyes twinkle mischievously. I've been thoroughly defeated, and by a girl that's a fraction of my size at that. Then again, being defeated doesn't seem quite so bad. Emmy being positioned over my waist isn't something that I, or my body, can ignore easily. I open my lips to speak, but Emmy's head darts downward before I can get so much as a word out. I give no resistance as she presses her mouth to mine. Not that I'd want to. This is different somehow. She pulls back, nips my lower lip, and reinitiates the embrace. Her tongue darts inside my mouth. Oh man, we're going deep. We're oh. we're going deep. Okay. <clears throat> Her tongue darts inside my mouth, exploring. I can feel a warmth spreading throughout my body as my heart begins to beat faster. 
my mind starts to go foggy, and I become vaguely aware of my hand traveling up Emmy's blouse. <laughs> Emmy gasps as I reach her breast, and then there's a giggling. And then I stare up at a grinning Emmy. Told you, that makes my second win now. Uh, what? That doesn't count. You used feminine wiles. All spare and love and war, right? Ha! You're even blushing! I didn't know you were a blusher, he said. You were blushing too, you know. Probably because of your prudish ways. You, even I've got to admit, this is a stupid thing to say to a woman who is currently straddling me and has been up... Oh, and has been, up until a few seconds ago, playing tonsil hockey with me. A prude, am I? Well then, let's see who blushes first, shall we? Oh... Oh god. Oh god. I'm not sure whether the tone of her voice terrifies or arouses me, but that question is quickly made rather moot. It's the latter. Is that supposed to be an analogy for her boobs? Melons? It's funny because my screen has cuttlefish. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! No! What the hell? What the- what? This no, isn't no, safe for work. No, 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 wait. We disabled it! It's- it's checked right there. Can what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> then, is the adult content, like, cutscenes? Is it, like, full on? I- I- at this point, or is it I really- is it, like- I really I don't- I really don't- I feel it's, like, the bits. Like the like I, it's it's just like hentai like full on I hentai. Just, I just because if they broken? think that this is it broken, I'm so lost right now. I don't know what the what the cantaloupe was supposed to be, or what the cuttlefish was supposed to be. If they're somehow related, uh, just let's go, go. I had I had two cuttlefish. I had, um, and I had, they were just chilling in the coral. I had, uh, I had, well, you saw, I had the You had cantaloupe, cantaloupe with some slices. Yeah. And you, and you thought it was, it was boobs, and you no, were right. It's, it's <laughs> the melons, I'm just... Wow. That's nipple. This, this <laughs> caught me, this is full on. Just, yeah. I'm just, this is... This is, this would be a bad time for someone to walk into the room right uh, now. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, did I blush? Oh, my clothes are gone. <laughs> I did not notice. I'm I'm staring elsewhere. <laughs> did did I? Ooh, fact time. I haven't tested this ever, but apparently when when your face blushes, your your butt also blushes. I heard that somewhere. So he, maybe maybe if he had looked at her butt, he would know. He would have known. Yeah. Except. I'm trying to try to make light of this. Emmy shrugs, still breathing a little heavily. Didn't notice either. Well, maybe. Oh God! We should... <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Go away, Rue. <laughs> I mean, if you. Don't say join in. <laughs> Do not. Want to just in. turn around and close the door? That'd be great. Yes. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> <sighs> I need to use your window. My first instinct is to hide, but then I realize that I'm utterly exhausted and sitting next to a topless Emmy, so there's no running away. Oh, shit. What? They just had sex. You didn't put that together? No, I thought I thought they were still fooling around. I did no. The cantaloupe and cuttlefished. I I <laughs> thought it was just like her undressing. I didn't think they they got down into the nitty gritty. I think they got down. And he's that's exhausted. why they didn't notice who blushed. Yeah, that's, that's... that's why they're both out of breath. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So he sows naked too. This just makes it ten times worse. Oh yeah. Cause Rin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Rin's eyes passes over Emmy and me and focuses on the window. There was a cloud. A cloud? Rin nods. I was watching it from my window, but it didn't stay in my window. So I need to use your window. Emmy shifts a little, causing me to cough in order to cover up a giggle of my own. How long do you need the window for? We're, uh... busy. This time I couldn't contain my laughter. Rin ignores both Emmy and me and peers out the window. Her shoulders slump and she looks disappointed. Hmm. Huh. Changed into something else. Disappointing. Emmy is having trouble keeping a straight face. Sorry to hear that, Rin. Could we have a little privacy now, please? <laughs> I wish I could get a read on Rin and, like, understand what was going through her head. <laughs> she has her own chapter, so you know what? I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. Rin shrugs as if to say, can you? And hooks her foot around the door, pulling it close, closed behind her. We both dissolve into, uh, ruckus? Yeah. Yeah. Ru yeah, ruckus laughter. Unable to deal with Rin's bizarrely timed visit any other way. After our laughter dies down, I look to Emmy. We're both a total mess. Well. Emmy raises an eyebrow. Well? <laughs> okay, okay, to be fair, he saw this is probably his first time. It probably only lasted a couple seconds. Of cuttlefish and melons. He probably just needed to 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 just take a breather. Maybe See, have a I think snack. I, you're 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 selling he saw short though. I'm just saying I think you're selling he saw short on this one. I yeah. It I also it... feel like if he hadn't been running this whole time, he would have died. <laughs> because if a girl asking him out gave bleh, if a girl asking him out gave him a heart attack, this <laughs> is oh. whole nother level. Whole nother like, level. The final level. <laughs> Emmy grins and laugh, laughs, and then she nods. <laughs> what? What? We should probably ditch the clothes this time. Oh, do they not? What? Do they just... I'm thoroughly confused. Because I want to hold you close On my own feet I started